combine many of the previous checkpoints um, as practice here for your final product. This is not, doing this checkpoint is not your final product, but it it's going to contain pretty much all of the elements of what you will be doing for your final product. So this is an important checkpoint. We're going to adjust the eye, we're going to um, smooth out the skin tone while maintaining the textures, and we're going to increase contrast um, and the shadows and the highlights on her face. Now, you're going to need this open, and you're also going to want to, from the checkpoint, download and open as well this here. This is going to give us pretty much where we're going to do uh, the shadows and the highlights. So we'll have that open here in the side. Okay, so let's first adjust the eye. Um, you know, there's a there's a lot of edits you can do on a person in Photoshop, and this gets into the world of ethical editing. Um, normally, you know, if you're doing an edit, I want it like sh her eye is fine. Uh, this is really just to, so you guys get more practice with uh, just, you know, how to do these types of things in Photoshop. Typically, whenever you're, if you are editing, you know, a person, you know, doing the face, smoothing out the skin tone, um, increasing the shadows and the highlights, all of that certainly falls within the realm of ethical and fine editing. It's really whenever you, you know, start using something like the liquify tool and you start changing actual proportions of the body and the face that uh, you kind of get into questions of ethical editing which of course we've all been brainwashed for quite a while on you know countless magazine covers uh, seeing what we think you know celebrities um, and people look like when in reality it's been heavily heavily photoshopped and even the proportions and contours of the body have been altered with uh, the liquify tool which we're not going to be doing all right so let's go ahead and jump into this we're going to get our lasso tool out here let's get this eye if you recall from the previous bruised eye checkpoint we are going to copy and then paste command t and we want to right click and flip this horizontally and we're going to drag it over here to this side enter then we want to command click and we want to contract our selection so we want to go to select modify contract by about 10 pixels and then we want to go to our original picture and we want to delete that selection we contracted just hit delete from here and you can see it, it cuts that out and we need that cut out because we're going to blend these two layers together so hold your shift button select both of the layers we're going to go to edit and auto blend layers panorama okay and there we go so real quick oh, let's go ahead and so you can see before and after is as I do this at the end. So before and after. All right, so let's continue. Now we are we're ready to do our contouring, shadows and our darks. So these are going to be done both by adjustment curves. So go to your adjustment layers and get out the curves. This is going to be our darks. So click and bring down your darks to about pretty dark probably about right there and then we're going to invert this mask currently the adjustment layer is all white in the mask all visible we want it to be all black because we're going to target exactly where we want that to be create another adjustment layer this is going to be our highlights so bring it up bring the whites up high and again Click inside that layer mask, Command I to invert. All right, so now we need to, to look here at our contouring um, example. So here is going to be the darks, and obviously the white is going to be the highlights. So let's do our darks first. Kind of goes around the forehead, 
cheekbone, um, the nose here, lower end of the, from the chin or cheek underneath the cheekbones, and then some on the neck. So what we want to do is we can double click here. This is our shadows. This is our highlights. We want to get our brush, make it large enough, about right there. We want it to be a hard brush, not soft. And go ahead and put a flow or opacity up to 100%. And we're just going to paint in, might look odd at first, these highlights or shadows. So, so cheekbone, forehead, I'm going to lower it here for the nose area. It can, comes in here, and then underneath the nose, back up here. And I think there was down here a little bit. And then on the neck, I think. So we'll do that. Make sure that was all of them. All right. Now we're going to go to our highlights, and we're going to do the same thing. So some highlights here. Some underneath the eye here. I think it, yeah, followed. So there's a straight one here. So if I just click and then hold my shift button and then click, it'll make a straight line. I think there's some here. Kind of came in down here. And then chin, and a little bit right here underneath that cheekbone. Okay, so now we need to feather out these selections, right? Because we painted with a hard brush revealing these contour highlights and shadows, and now we want to fade that out. We want to feather it. So. Click on our shadows first, double click there in that mask, and we're going to go to our feather, and we're going to bring that up and adjust it. Um, so that's probably a pretty good area. That's still not enough, so about right there. And now we're going to do the same thing to our highlights. We're going to feather that in. So that's, that's still maybe too much, right about there, pretty good. Let's see our before and after. Hold our Alter Option key and click on that bottom one. So there is before and after. And I think we could probably tone down the shadows a little bit more, so we want to increase that feather. There we go. Okay, that's good. Okay, now the next step we want to do is to um, we want to tone and blend in the skin tone right we want to soften the skin tone now as we do that we don't want to affect the skin texture at all right if I just blurred the skin right now if I got a selection of some of the areas I want to to blur in order to soften that skin tone right this is one whole picture it's also going to blur the skin tone, and I'm going to lose the skin details, sorry, the skin details, right? You know, little bumps and whatnots of the skin. So we need to create or um, we need to separate from this picture colors from the detail so that I can work just on the colors without affecting the details of the skin at all. So how do we do that? Well, first, we've done all of this work. We need to create a composite of the work we have. So Shift, Alter Option, Command E. This is going to be our colors. Create a duplicate of this, Command J. And this one is going to be our details that will sit on top. So first, let's mess with our colors. So we're going to go to Filter. Now, for this one, um, don't... Even though we, you know, we've said anytime you're doing an effect, first make your layer into a smart object. That won't work for this one because we're going to, need to do a, an apply image. Um, so, and that won't work with a smart filter. So, but that's okay. 
uh, what we're doing here, it won't it won't matter, and we won't be able to work with the smart filter. So go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now what we're doing here, we don't want to go too much, right? We want to go just enough. You might have to zoom in so that we don't see any of the skin detail. So you want to bring it up so that you don't see any of the detail in the skin anymore. But we just have we blurred out the skin, you know, little bumps or what uh, little pores that we might be seeing. We blurred it out so that we just have skin tone. So at about 4.4 is good for mine. So I'm going to hit OK. Now let's go back to our details or click on this layer. And we what we want to do is subtract the colors, this colors layer. We want to subtract everything here from this layer which if we subtract all of the colors, it would leave us just with the details of this layer. So we need to apply um, this colors layer to this details layer, um, and we, we need to subtract it. So that's going to, with our details layer selected, we're going to go to image, sorry, it's an, an edit, and we're going to go to Oh, sorry, it was image. Um, apply image. So click on apply image. You can see it all goes to gray. Um, and the reason for that is we have the blending mode to subtract. But first we need to choose the right layer. I haven't choose the right layer yet. So I'm on the details layer. And I'm wanting to apply the colors layer. So I need to go to layers here, go down to colors. And you can already see, right, it's it's removed all of the colors pretty much, and it's left us with just the details of the skin. Um, and the reason for that is because of the blend mode here that you want to make sure you choose is subtract. Yours will probably be on, you know, normal to begin with, and it'll look like nothing's happened. But we want to subtract the colors from our this layer here and you want to make sure that scale is one and offset is 128 opacity 100 percent and then hit ok and now we need to properly blend this gray mode details layer back into our colors layer so we're going to go to the blend mode and we're going to choose linear light and there we go all of the details are back if I there's that, and if I were to put this back to normal, you can see what this layer is. Okay, so now we can work on our colors, softening the skin to the, the tones of the skin without affecting our um, details of the skin because we have that up here. So we can make all of these edits on this layer, and it's not going to affect our details. And the edits we want to make again, right, we want to smooth out the skin tone. And if you're going to smooth something out, right, you're going to be blurring it slightly. So we're going to get our lasso tool, and uh, we want to make fairly large selections where we want to blend in better the skin tone. Uh, one thing, this is what you're not going to do. You're not just going to create, you know, one big selection, right? We're making many different selections throughout here. So let's do some here in the forehead. So right here, and then we're going to go to filter blur gaussian blur and we're going to move this you don't want to go too high so there's kind of what it looked like and you can tell as we increase it it's it's um blending in that skin tone it's smoothing it out so we're going to make some more selections and if that number that number that you chose for the first part is most often going to continue to work well so you can just come back up when you go to filter and just click on gouge and blur again and it'll apply that exact same amount there. So just go around now in the face and blur out that skin tone. Soften it out some.
Oh, I forgot to mention, even though it's been working fairly well on mine, you want to make sure that as you're doing this, that you have a feather at about 20. Um, otherwise, as you can see up here, you get these hard edges. So I'm going to Command Z, I forgot to do that, and fix that. There we go. So 20, and now gouge and blur, and I shouldn't be getting those hard lines. There we go. So you can see how it's blending in that skin tone without affecting our details at all. Okay. All right. So there we go. So let's check out now our original. Hold our alter option button. Click on this bottom one. There's the original. And holding alter option again, click on that bottom one. And these are the edits that we've made. And uh, that. Let's double check here. I believe that is it for this checkpoint. Ah, uh, yes. One, I did a better job, I think, this second go around. <laughs> One final thing you can do add another adjustment layer, brightness or contrast, and just increase the contrast some. Oh, maybe right there. Okay. So, before, original and after with our contouring and our frequency separation separating the colors from the detail that is known as a frequency separation okay that is it for this checkpoint